Last night I did something in a fantasy football draft that caused my entire chat to laugh at me, and that's with my 195th pick in my fantasy football draft. I selected a player that's typically selected within the first four rounds, and that's Deshaun Watson. And everybody laughed at me because the idea is that there is no way, shape, or form that this man is going to play in the NFL. And with the recent updates that I have for you guys today, we're going to come and try to deduce the question whether or not Deshaun Watson will play in the NFL this year. Now, before we get to the content, dude, there is no way, shape, or form this video is going to get monetized because of the content of this video, which is fine by me. But whenever YouTube can't make money on a video or demonetizes the video, they're more prone to not sending out that video to a brand new audience. And honestly, all I care about is getting people to watch my content. So if you could leave a like on this video, it could counteract that because the more likes a video gets, the more it tells YouTube, hey, this is good content, show it to more people. In addition to that, we're giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel. And we're going to be closing out the Madden code giveaway on my Instagram this weekend. So make sure you're following on on Instagram and Twitter to enter for a chance to win some Madden codes. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! Personally, I love fantasy football, but unfortunately, when you make like five videos a day the way I do, you don't really have time to be a part of as many fantasy football leagues as I would like to be a part of. And I don't have enough time to set up lineups and focus on the waiver wire and just stress myself out each and every week with all the details. Thankfully, there is a fantasy football league that allows me to just go based off of my fantasy football brilliance and not so so much on my ability to stay up till three in the morning placing waiver wire claims and it's called underdog fantasy underdog fantasy also has this great one million dollar tournament that you get a free entry to so you could try it out the way it works is you go ahead and you draft your team in the very beginning and underdog fantasy calculates your score based off of the best players that scored for you that week which means there's no players that are going to be left on your bench which means if odell beckham jr goes off for 40 points one week you're not going to accidentally leave him on your bench because he'll automatically be part of your starting lineup. Your best players are automatically in, the players that stink stay on the bench, and honestly I think it's a way better way of playing fantasy football. So you can check it out by using my link in the description down below, and if you use my promo code you get a free $25 to try it out. And thank you Underdog Fantasy for the sponsor. Mike check 1212 what's going on everybody? In order to understand this Deshaun Watson situation, you need to understand how we got here. Because there there is an element of sketchiness and I'm just naturally a very skeptical person that goes into this entire situation. And I guess you could say that the beginning of this entire situation was the mismanagement of Deshaun Watson's career if you're as big of a skeptic as I am. You see, in Deshaun Watson's rookie season, the Houston Texans seemed poised to be the next great NFL dynasty. On the offensive side of the ball, they had Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, and that's really all you need to carry an offense. They had an average offensive line, but nothing that was too bad. Yes, they had aging left tackle Dwayne Brown, but on the defensive side of the ball, they had some promising players like JJ Watt and former number one overall pick Jadavian Clowney. So this all began in the 2017 season when the Houston Texans and Dwayne Brown couldn't see eye to eye on a contract and the Texans decided to trade Dwayne Brown to the Seattle Seahawks in the middle of the season. Now, as a result, the left tackle is the most important position in football in regards to protecting protecting your quarterback, which is why we all made fun of the Cincinnati Bengals when they opted to draft another wide receiver who's wide receiver number four on their depth chart over a franchise altering left tackle like Panay Sewell. The result of this is in 2018, after a remarkable rookie season, Deshaun Watson was sacked 62 times, which is not really what you want a quarterback coming off of an ACL injury to deal with at his age 23 season. Despite this, the Texans were fairly successful. They went 
11 and 5 in his second year, but it was clear that the Texans needed to do something to protect Deshaun Watson. Well, here's where the problems arose. There are very few head coaches in the NFL that are capable of both being a head coach and a general manager in the NFL. Maybe it's just both duties are very, very hard. And unless if you're some sort of maniac that eats, sleeps, and breathes football like Bill Belichick, very few people can execute it. Unfortunately, for the Houston Texans, they had a head coach that was also acting as their general manager once they fired their own general manager, and that was Bill O'Brien. And Bill O'Brien did have the right idea, but he just had a horrible valuation of his players and his assets. So the very first move Bill O'Brien did in order to shore up the left tackle position was trading two first round picks and a second round pick for Laramie Tunsil of the Miami Dolphins, which was a very solid player, not necessarily worth that asking price. In addition to this, and this actually came a little bit before, the Houston Texans also traded their former number one overall pick, Jadavian Clowney, to Seattle, and they didn't really get much for him in return. This would be a little bit of a foreshadowing, but it was still something that Houston Texans fans ignored because once again, the Houston Texans won 10 and five that year with Deshaun Watson under center. Yet another remarkable season for Watson with 26 touchdowns and 12 interceptions thrown. But things really hit the fan that off season when they decided, hey, you know what's a good idea? Let's trade DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson. They didn't really get that much draft compensation in return. And like many of us predicted, the Houston Texans went from a playoff team all the way to a team that only won four games last year. Of course, in the middle of the season, Bill O'Brien was fired. And at this point, you could understand Deshaun Watson's getting a little frustrated. He was drafted to a team that was literally a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl. And now, unfortunately, he's stuck on a rebuilding team, which by the way, he just signed a contract extension with. But it's okay. He's still willing to ride it out with the Houston Texans. He just wants to be involved a little bit more in personnel decisions. The Texans need to hire a brand new general manager and a brand new head coach that offseason. And Deshaun Watson just wants his opinions to be heard. And of course, the owner of the Houston Texans went to Deshaun Watson and said, hey, you know what? I am going to make sure that you are heard, Deshaun. We are going to consult you about the general manager position before we do anything. Well, apparently Cal McNair did not do that because the Houston Texans went ahead and hired Nick Casario as their general manager. And as a result, Deshaun Watson got very upset, even tweeting out that some things never change. Shortly following this, he demanded a trade. Now, the reason I gave you that entire background is if you understand his football story and you understand his frustration, then you can understand the little theory. And again, this is a theory and I'm very skeptical of this theory and I don't even necessarily think it's true, but it's still something that I like to put out there for you guys to deduce on your own. There's a little theory that once this trade demand was made, there may have been some sabotage of Deshaun Watson's character involved. And again, that's a theory that could be debunked easily based upon how this case goes. So Deshaun Watson demanded a trade and immediately becomes one of the hottest commodities in the entire NFL. I mean, how often do you see a 26 year old QB off of the greatest season of his career? He threw for 4,800 yards, 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions in his age 25 season. How often do you see a quarterback like this hit the market? Furthermore, if you ask me, I think the Houston Texans made the right call in regards to their general manager because Nick Casario has handled this situation really well. But here's where the curveball comes. On March 16th, 2021, Tony Busby announces in an extravagant Instagram post that he's filing a lawsuit against Deshaun Watson. Now, Watson responded to this Instagram post, which to be honest, is kind of ridiculous if you pay attention to it. There's a lot of hypocrisy involved in regards to Tony Busby because he claims that he's not really in this for the money, but it just seems like he might be in this for the money, at least based upon the language in this post. Again, you guys could deduce it for yourselves. Watson responded to this report saying that he denies ever treating a woman with anything other than the utmost respect and called Busby a publicity seeking plaintiff lawyer. And originally, of course, my initial thoughts was, hey, this could just be the, some sort of sabotage from the Houston Texans, which doesn't really make any sense. I don't know why any team would sabotage its own player, even if they were seeking a trade for him. But on top of this, what's really strange is Busby apparently was the late Bob McNair's owner, which was the original owner of the Houston Texans. So it's just something to bear in mind. Now, what's strange is this isn't just a single case. The next day we hear two new cases filed against Deshaun Watson. And on March 18th, the NFL officially opens an investigation into Watson. Four days after that, Tony Busby files seven additional cases after holding a news conference in his Houston office, which brought the total case number to 14. The next day, Deshaun Watson's lawyer, Rusty Hardin, accuses a specific woman 
attempting to blackmail Deshaun Watson because none of the accusers names were released to Watson's legal team, which at this point, when you're being sued by 16 people, I'd assume you'd want to know who's suing you. About a week later, the lawsuit also alleges that Deshaun Watson was deleting Instagram messages and is attempting to contact people who formerly provided him massages in an attempt to settle. Now, his lawyer denied this in a statement saying, like a lot of people, Deshaun Watson regularly deletes his past Instagram messages. That being said, he has not deleted any messages since March 15th, the day before the first lawsuit was filed. We categorically deny that he has reached out directly to his accusers in an attempt to settle these cases. Now, two days later, 18 different massage therapists come out and defend Deshaun Watson. Rusty Harden's office released statements from these 18 therapists who say that the accusations are inconsistent with their experiences with Deshaun Watson, saying that he has received dozens of unsolicited phone calls, letters, emails, and text messages from professional massage therapists who have worked with Watson, saying they never felt uncomfortable or that he never demanded anything outside of the scope of a professional massage. Now, the question here is, if this is truly the case, then why on earth does Deshaun Watson have so many different massage therapists? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very attached to the massage therapist that consistently knows what she is doing. Like, if I find a good massage therapist, I tend to keep going back to the same massage therapist over and over and over again. I don't necessarily go and find like 20 other massage therapists. Now, three days later, Tony Busby at this point has filed 21 lawsuits on behalf of women accusing Watson of misconduct and said in a statement late Friday that he was aware of the complaint that was filed, but was not personally involved in the process. Busby wrote on Instagram that he would not take evidence against Watson to the Houston police, contradicting two prior statements saying that he would go elsewhere to provide our evidence to investigative authorities. So three days later, Busby will also file a 22nd case. And then the next day, two women go public with the Watson accusations, one being a woman by the name of Ashley Solis, who actually read a prepared statement while seated next to Tony Busby, and the other being Laura Baxley, who wrote a letter to Deshaun Watson that was read by attorney Cornelia Branfield Harvey. So these are the first of 22 women that sued Deshaun Watson in civil court that would identify themselves publicly. And of course, as a result of this, one day later, Deshaun Watson would start losing endorsement deals with Nike, Reliant Energy, and Beats by Dre. So this is clearly affecting him at this point. The next day, Watson's lawyer files a motion to request that the plaintiff identifies herself, asking who the hell are the rest of the women that are suing Deshaun Watson. And the judges rule that 13 plaintiffs must identify themselves and refile cases, which means 13 of 22 women have to come out and say who they are. And lo and behold, five days later, 20 women ID themselves in court filings and another woman joins the lawsuit against Deshaun Watson. Tony Busby then says that it appears that Deshaun Watson's team thinks that if these courageous women are forced to identify themselves, they would slink away and not pursue this matter. Watson and his counsel badly miscalculated due to the bravery of Ashley Solis to come forward publicly and despite the death threat she has experienced, these women are emboldened. A day later, all 22 plaintiffs would officially be identified. The next day, Deshaun Watson would once again deny all these allegations in a seven-page legal response via his attorney. And two weeks later, Roger Goodell came out and spoke about the situation for the first time, saying that we take this very seriously and these allegations are very concerning to us. We're obviously following that and looking at that ourselves independently. And there are important steps that we will be taking as part of our personal conduct policy. When we get to that point, we will certainly make a decision. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. Almost a month later, on May 21st, Cal McNair's attorney tries to mediate between the 22 women suing Watson and the legal teams for Watson. So this is interesting because where did this really come from? According to Athletic, Mr. McNair was aware that his personal attorney contacted both parties to suggest mediation. Mr. McNair has had no personal involvement in any of those discussions, and the Houston Texans had not had any direct contact with either party. Things get quiet up until July 26th, where 10 women came out and filed complaints against Deshaun Watson. Eight of the women are among the 22 who had filed civil lawsuits accusing him of misconduct. Deshaun Watson would report to training camp the day before on July 25th, even though he requested a trade. And then a few days later on July 27th, the NFL says that there are no restrictions 
restrictions on Watson as the investigation continues. Now, this is where it gets interesting because on August 13th, the NFL interviews 10 plaintiffs accusing Watson of misconduct and still holds that as of August 13th, there are no restrictions at all. Now, five days later, Deshaun Watson would meet with the FBI, but not the NFL. But here's where things get really interesting. Over the next couple of weeks, Deshaun Watson's name would run rampant in trade rumors because of course, this is the best time to trade for a quarterback and really acclimate him to a brand new system. And there are a number of teams that are interested. There even was a report about two weeks ago stating that Deshaun Watson's about to get traded to either the Panthers or the Dolphins. And obviously as time progressed forward, both the Panthers and Dolphins pulled out of those trades because, well, the Houston Texans had too high of an asking price. The Philadelphia Eagles were also rumored to be interested, but they pulled out as well. Mainly because Deshaun Watson's fate is very, very interesting at this point. Despite being on the official roster currently, David Culley confirmed that Tyrod Taylor will start under center for the Houston Texans when they begin their 2021 season against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a huge part of that has to do with the uncertainty surrounding Deshaun Watson. So this is very unique because Deshaun Watson technically could play, but he's not. I can't help but wonder if Tyrod Taylor is playing because of Deshaun Watson's misconduct case or because Deshaun Watson simply has not prepared much with the Houston Texans over the offseason. Needless to say, this is a very sticky situation for both Deshaun and for the Houston Texans, because if you're the Houston Texans, you're pretty much paying a quarterback an annual salary of $39 million just to sit on your bench. So although this is kind of being branded as a situation where Deshaun Watson isn't playing mainly because of his current case situation, I think it has more to do with the fact that he hasn't been prepared as a result of really not fully participating in training camp and learning the brand new offensive playbook under a brand new head coach. But needless to say, this is a very sticky and uncomfortable situation for Deshaun Watson. For all you know, if this case takes one wrong turn, or if we get a little bit more information on this situation, Deshaun Watson could be suspended for a majority of this season. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all of this information. I know it was a lot and it was really difficult to compile together. Of course, leave a like, consider subscribing and turning on our notifications if you enjoy. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.